Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back learners the video is for the subject of geography for the course of bachelor's in arts with geography or bachelor's in arts with honors in geography the video is for the paper of climatology and today we will be starting with module 2 which is solar radiation heat balance and temperature the topic for the video lecture is solar radiation and electromagnetic spectrum the video is being recorded by dr pallavi upreti the course coordinator and presenter for the video is dr pallavi upreti affiliated to department of geography dun university the academic expert and reviewer for the video is professor santosh verma head of the department department of geography sdm pg government degree college doiwala dehradun affiliated to shri dev suman uttarakhand university the video is produced and presented under the project name dth swayam prabha channels of mhrd new delhi india Hello learners I am Dr Pallavi Preeti assistant professor in the department of geography in Dr Nityanand Himalayan Research and Study Center Doon University Dehradun In our last module which was on atmosphere we have already discussed the evolution origin significance of atmosphere we have also discussed the various layers of atmosphere and their significance in supporting the life Today we are going to start module 2 of climatology which is on insulation and heat budget and in this particular video lecture we will be studying the solar radiation and electromagnetic spectrum so let's begin the objectives of this particular lecture is to understand how sun is the ultimate source of energy to our planet what is the mechanism of solar radiation that is how the energy is produced within the sun and the radiant energy which is produced within the sun what is the mechanism of its transfer how it is transported to earth and what kind of energy reaches the earth what are the types of electromagnetic radiations and what is electromagnetic spectrum besides this we will be also discussing few short points like what are solar activities and what are sun spots and solar flares and how do these affect insulation or temperature on our earth so this will be the main objectives of this particular lecture so let's begin as we all know that our earth is the only habitable planet in the entire solar system and earth receives its energy from various sources like from within its interiors from various endogenetic forces from gravity and as part of solar radiation also but the energy of sun or the solar radiation is one of the main sources of energy which drives our planet which makes life possible on our planet and sun just like every other star produces its own energy so the main source of energy of sun being a star comes from within itself from within the sun only so sun is the enormous ball of extremely hot gases and largely ionized gases shining under its own power located at the center of our solar system and the radiant energy emitted by the sun is called as solar radiation that comes from within the sun itself we will be discussing in coming slides that how sun produces its own energy and this energy which is uh, produced by the sun is the main source of life on earth because it drives various biophysical processes various atmospheric processes biological processes and physical processes on earth which has made earth the only habitable planet in the entire solar system so you can say that the sun is the great engine that sustains the biospheric system on earth sun being the center of our solar system accounts for about 99.86% of the total mass of the entire solar system and it is 1.39 million kilometers in diameter and 109 times than the 
size of earth so if you take 109 earths together you can very well fit all these earths inside the sun so it is 109 times than the earth the average distance between the sun and earth is 150 million kilometers earth is the third planet from sun and the average distance is 150 million kilometers why we say average distance because the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical path so while it completes its one revolution in 365 days the distance between the sun and earth keeps on changing sometimes it is more and sometimes it is less so the average distance is 150 million kilometers and it is said that this particular distance is within the goldilocks zone of sun goldilocks zone what is goldilocks zone goldilocks zone refers to the habitable zone around the stars where the temperature is just right it is neither too hot nor it is too cold for the liquid water to exist on our planet so you can say that earth basically lies within the goldilocks zone so it is the circumstellar habitable zone of the star so you can see that the earth and even mars also lies within this goldilocks zones and because of this thing it has intrigued the scientific community uh, to look for possibilities of life on mars because it is a kind of earth's twin planet so goldilocks zone is the that particular zone which is habitable zone within the circumstellar habitable zone of sun solar energy solar radiation is the basis of the existence of the entire solar system including our planet earth but before starting anything about insulation about the optimal temperatures on our planet i would like to briefly discuss about what is the source of sun's energy how this tremendous energy in sun is created is emitted that it heats up the entire solar system so as we all know the sun is made up of 75% of hydrogen and 25% of helium but this hydrogen and helium in our sun does not exist in gaseous form it exists in a different form which is called as a plasma state so what is a plasma state plasma state is generally called as the fourth state of matter besides solid liquid and gas so what exactly is plasma state plasma is highly heated state of a particular gas because of very high temperatures on sun the atoms of these two gases hydrogen and helium they are completely ionized and such ionized gases which are super heated in their form forms a fourth state of gas which is called as a plasma state so in sun these two gases exist in very highly superheated form which is called as the plasma state and the tremendous amount of energy in sun is created because of the process of nuclear fusion so nuclear fusion is a kind of a process wherein tremendous amount of energy is released because of collision of certain highly reactive atoms so in case of sun because it is made up of 75% of hydrogen so the nuclear fusion reaction takes place in the sun's core where under enormous confining pressure the hydrogen atoms collide to form helium generating tremendous amount of heat energy which is the main source of energy to heat up the entire solar system and it takes four hydrogen atoms that means four hydrogen atoms collide together they they bombard together to form one helium atom so in this particular process because it is an uncontrolled reaction it is an uncontrollable process immense amount of energy is released and this particular energy a fraction of it reaches our earth also which is important for the survival for the existence of life on earth so the sun core fuses about 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium it is very difficult to even imagine 600 million tons of hydrogen is converted every second into helium thereby 4 million tons of matter is converted into energy every second as a result of which this immense the the main cause of sun's energy is this continuous nuclear fusion reaction which has been going on since ages since millions of years and it is a main source of energy for our planet so in short 
inside the sun's core this nuclear fusion reaction continuously keeps on going where hydrogen atoms bombard together to produce helium atom and as a byproduct immense amount of energy is released which is important for our earth so the energy in sun is primarily produced in the core however there are different layers in sun which we will be discussing briefly in this slide that there are different layers in sun which play their role in producing transmitting transferring the energy and allowing it to transfer from the inner core region to the outside region of the sun and finally emitting it to the entire solar system so the sun layers can be divided into main two parts the inner region layers and the outer region layers the inner region layers are mainly composed of three main layers first is core the core is the innermost layer of the sun and it is mostly in plasma state the temperature in core is 15 million degrees celsius and it is this layer where the nuclear fusion reaction continuously takes place where the hydrogen bombards together and they are converted into helium atoms second layer is radiated zone so when the energy is created in the core it is transmitted to the outer region outer margins so the second layer is the radiative zone when energy is received in the radiative zone it serves as a path for the energy that is released by core and here the transfer of energy is mainly done through the radiation by photons so photons travel so slow that sometimes it takes nearly 50 million years also for this particular region of the sun to transfer the energy from the inner radiative zone to the outer radiative zone so this is the core region here the old bombardment of hydrogen to helium and nuclear fusion reaction is taking place and when the energy reaches the outer margins it kind of travels in form of photons so they are radiated and it may take up to 50 million years also for the photon to reach to the outer margins of the radiative zone and from the outer margins of the radiative zone the convective zone starts it is the third and the outermost layer also you can say of the inner region of the sun so here in this convective zone the bubbles of hot plasma rises and circulates before transferring to the outer region of the sun so here what happens when the energy reaches this particular region of the convective zone so what happened the bubbles of hot plasma rises in this region because they are very very hot and once they reach the outer region of the convective zones because this is a colder region the plasma it becomes cold and it slumps back so this kind of travel is mostly circular it it rises up and then it slumps back to the radiated zone again and this is how the energy is transferred to the outer zone which is the convective zone from convective zone the energy is transferred to the outer region of the sun which also consists of three main layers the innermost of this just above the convective zone is photosphere so photosphere is actually the visible surface of the sun which is visible to us as giant a ball of yellow shining you know heated ball it is visible to us and here the gases they are continuously bubbling from the convective zone so this is comparatively a cooler layer of the sun with 6700 degree celsius of temperature so now from photosphere these gases travel further to the outside zone which is called as chromosphere from photosphere the energy reaches to the outer margins of the sun and uh, chromosphere is the layer just above the photosphere so it is a reddish outer region of the sun and it is mostly heated by the energy from beneath which is the photosphere so you can see in this particular diagram that this this whole giant yellow shining ball of heat is photosphere and just the reddish margins of photosphere towards the outer margins is chromosphere now the third and the outermost region of the sun is called as corona so corona is that particular layer of sun which is mostly not visible to us with our naked eyes and it is only visible during the time of solar eclipse as you can see in this image that when the moon covers the photosphere of sun this particular layer is visible as you know shining halo from behind the moon because the photosphere is completely covered so this temperature in this corona is 
very very high and it may reach up to 2 million degrees celsius also at times and it is this region of the sun from where hot you know blazing solar winds are emitted into the outer space and a fraction of it sometimes also reaches the earth we will be discussing this in later slides and the temperature of this corona is very very high it may reach up to 1 to 2 million degrees celsius also so these are the six important layers of the sun being innermost region of the sun which produces the tremendous amount of energy to the fusion reaction and then to all these layers the energy is transferred it is transmitted to the outer regions of the sun from the core and then to the radiative zone then convective zone then it enters into the outer region which also has three layers photosphere chromosphere and corona and finally the energy is dissipated it is released into the space and fraction of it is received by earth which is important for us also the bundle of energy emitted by the sun are called as photons which are particles of radiation having property of wavelength and this continuous emission of photons from the sun surface causes continuous bands of radiation so it resembles like continuous bands of radiations which are being emitted from the sun and then they dispersed into the space this particular solar energy radiated from the outer surface of the sun in the form of electromagnetic waves are also called as electromagnetic radiations and these radiations travels at a very very high speed generally 3 lakh kilometers per second so their speed is very very high and they propagate through the space at this very very high speed and lights up the entire solar system and a minute fraction of it is also received by earth the solar radiations emitted by sun are electromagnetic radiation so why they are called as electromagnetic radiation because they consist of waves of the electromagnetic field propagating through space carrying electromagnetic radiant energy and why electromagnetic radiant energy because these particular radiations travel in a wave like patterns and they are synchronized oscillations of electric and magnetic field so they are basically created due to the periodic changes of electric and magnetic fields and they travel outward in a radial manner so wave like pattern is created and they travel in a radial manner with oscillating due to the creation of electric and magnetic field and covering an average distance of 150 million kilometers these electromagnetic waves travel outward in a radial manner from the outer margins of the sun almost in a straight line and they reaches the earth in 8 minutes and 20 seconds so once they reach the outer margins of our, our atmosphere our earth then from there they are called as insulation incoming solar radiation which have a very very particular role for the sustenance of life on earth which will be discussing how these waves differ how electromagnetic spectrum exists the electromagnetic radiations emitted by sun are expressed in terms of wavelength and wave frequency so what is a wavelength wavelength is the straight distance between the two successive crests or troughs in a wave so if this is a wave the straight distance between the two crests or troughs is called as wavelength so the wavelength of any electromagnetic wave can be more it can be less and it is generally expressed in terms of length units of meters centimeters millimeters depending upon what type of wavelength in a wave is and very short wavelengths can also be expressed in terms of microns besides wavelength the electromagnetic waves are also expressed as in terms of wave frequencies what is a wave frequency it is a number of radiations waves which passes through a particular point in a particular unit of time so the number of waves passing through a particular points suppose in a particular second is called as wave frequency so if more number of waves passes through a particular points in a given second it is high frequency 
and if less number of waves passes through a particular point in a given time period in a second it is called as low frequency waves and the wave frequency is generally expressed in terms of hertz megahertz and the wavelength of a particular wave and wave frequency are inversely proportional to each other if there the wavelength of any particular wave is more the frequency will be less if the wave frequency of any wave is more the wavelength is will definitely be less so depending upon these two characteristics there can be different types of waves which are emitted by sun for instance in this first wave you can see that the wavelength of this wave is more so the frequency of this wave is going to be less and in second case you can see that the wavelength between the two consecutive crest is medium or compared to this one it is less so it is medium so the wave frequency is also be going to be medium but is it will definitely be more than the first slide and in the third slide you can see that the number of wave frequencies or the number of waves which are passing in front of a point in a given time period is definitely much more higher than the first slide and second slide so the frequency of this wave is going to be high and wavelength you can see the wavelength between the two consecutive crests or troughs is definitely less so wavelength and wave frequency in any particular wave is inversely proportional to each other and based on these two properties the electromagnetic waves can be segregated into various segments in an electromagnetic spectrum all the radiant energy of the sun that reaches the earth arrives as solar radiation we have already discussed it and which is part of a large collection of energy called as electromagnetic radiation spectrum so as we have seen in the earlier slide that the electromagnetic waves differ in terms of wavelength and wave frequencies and they reach they are emitted by sun and they reach earth as a bundle of energy bundle of waves with different wavelengths and wave frequencies and they form a part of a large collection of energy bundle which is called as electromagnetic radiation spectrum having different wavelength and wave frequencies so different waves with different wave frequencies and wavelength are a part of bigger platform or bigger you can say bundle of energy which is called as electromagnetic radiation spectrum it includes radio waves microwaves infrared visible ultraviolet x rays and gamma rays so all these waves form part of electromagnetic spectrum we will be discussing all of them in detail in the next slide so there are different waves of different wavelength which form part of electromagnetic spectrum the electromagnetic radiations emitted by sun on the basis of their wavelengths and wave frequencies can be divided into four spectra of radiations so the number one spectra of radiation or spectrum of electromagnetic wave is very short wavelength radiations so these include gamma rays hard x rays soft x rays and uv rays in this particular spectrum of electromagnetic radiation the wavelength of the radiations is very very small so small that it can actually penetrate through various objects and the wave frequency is very very high so these wavelengths can be of very short wavelength range between 0.03 to 0.4 angstrom also and because of this they are considered very very harmful for our environment for human beings because they have this capability to penetrate through anything or everything that comes in their ways the second spectrum of radiation is the visible light where the wavelength varies from 0.4 to 0.7 microns in this particular spectrum the wavelength becomes a bit higher as compared to the very short wavelength radiation section and the wave frequency decreases because the wavelength increases so the wave frequency 
decreases. Various colors which are sensitive. So this spectrum is actually our eyes are sensitive to this particular spectrum. They can see in this particular section. So therefore it is called as visible light. So violet, indigo, blue, green, red, V, I, B, G, Y, O, R. All these colors can be seen in this particular radiations and third a spectrum of radiation beyond the red color of visible uh, light is called as the infrared radiation section infrared because it is beyond the red uh, portion of the visible light so in this section also you can see that the wavelength of the particular waves increases further and the frequency decreases further so these particular section consist of infrared waves which have the wavelength ranging from 0.7 micron to even 300 microns so you can see consistently the frequency is decreasing and the wavelength of uh, the radiation is increasing the fourth spectrum of electromagnetic radiation is the longer wavelength radiation which includes microwaves radar waves radio waves so it may range from 0.03 centimeters to even 1 centimeter so the wavelength becomes very very broadened you can see the wavelength is very long in this particular section and consecutively the frequency of the waves is very less therefore it is very long wavelength radiation spectrum including microwaves radar and radio waves so based on wavelength and wave frequencies the entire electromagnetic spectrum can be divided into first spectrum which is of very short wave radiation then we have visible uh, light spectrum then we have infrared spectrum and then long wavelength spectrum which includes microwave radar waves and radio waves all the spectrums of electromagnetic radiations have different role to play in our atmosphere and have significance to various activities various biological chemical physical activities and even support various human activities which exist on earth so the electromagnetic radiations which are emitted by sun based on their wavelengths and wave frequencies have different roles have different ways to contribute to our atmospheric systems or biological activities which is existing on earth or various even human activities they support so these three waves the ultraviolet radiations the x-rays and gamma rays are actually blocked by our atmosphere because our atmosphere does not allow them to enter to our surface because they are very very harmful because of their very high frequency they can penetrate into each and everything therefore can have detrimental effects on living beings on earth so our atmosphere is opaque to these three very short wavelength radiation it either reflects or refracts or absorbs sections of these very short wavelength radiations the another section of the electromagnetic radiation is visible spectrum so our atmosphere is actually transparent and it allows the visible light to enter and our eyes are sensitive to this particular section of radiation and it allows us to see things so the violet indigo blue green orange red so in these particular colors we can actually see things another section of electromagnetic radiations which atmosphere allows to enter is radio waves so again the earth atmosphere is opaque to uh, certain sections of infrared radiation and microwave radiations although it also allows certain types of infrared radiation to reach the surface of earth but to a larger section of infrared radiation it is opaque also and the last section with very very long wavelengths it allows the radio waves and transmission waves to enter into the earth so it is these long wave radiations are generally used for broadcasting radio and televisions the atmosphere also plays a significant role and all these electromagnetic radiations according to their wavelengths and wave frequencies have different role on our earth contributing to various processes that exist on earth. The most significant being the availability of visible light to which our eyes are sensitive through which we are able to see things and it ranges from violet which have a shorter wavelength and visible light spectrum to red which have a 
higher wavelength in visible spectrum. So beyond red, you have infrared and beyond violet, you have ultraviolet. So all the sections of electromagnetic radiations have definite roles to play. The solar energy emitted by sun is also affected by something called as solar activity cycle of sun, which is generally of 11 years. So basically the surface of sun is a very, very busy place. It has electrically charged gases that generate area of powerful magnetic field, magnetic forces, which is, which is called as magnetic field of sun. So these gases in sun are constantly moving, which tangles, stretches out and twist this magnetic field, creating a cycle of solar activity wherein the sun may have certain time periods of low solar activity and certain time periods of very high solar activity in these 11 years of time period. So generally this cycle of 11 years have variable stages of low solar activity and high solar activity. So sunspots and solar flares are basically manifestations of various stages of this solar activity cycle, wherein sunspots are generally formed during the time of very low solar activity in sun and the solar flares are many of very high solar activity in sun. So what are sunspots? Sunspots are areas that appear very dark on the surface of sun. So in photosphere, they appear dark because they are cooler than the other parts of the sun surface. However, they are still very hot or having a temperature of more than 6500 degree Fahrenheit. But these, these are the zones in sun with low solar activity, comparatively low solar activity to their adjoining areas. And therefore, they appear to be blacker in tone or they appear to be like black dots on the photosphere. So uh, as against opposite to sunspot, we have solar flares, which generally occur in sun cycle time period at the time of reflecting very high solar activity time period. So these flow, solar flares are sudden explosions of energy and intense eruption of electromagnetic radiation in the sun's atmosphere caused by tangling, crossing or reorganizing of magnetic field lines near the sunspot. So tremendous explosion occur because of the area near the area of very low solar activity that is sunspots and they generally occur to reorganize the magnetic field of the sun and they are ejected for hundreds of kilometers into the space looking like blazing lava-like emissions from sun. However, the sunspot and solar flare activity does not directly impact the temperatures on earth, but sometimes they do may have effect on temperature or other activities on the surface of earth. So most of the sunspot and solar flare activities are actually stopped by the Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere acts as a shield and does not allow these extreme solar activities to impact the Earth's atmosphere or Earth's surface. However, sometimes these solar flares are so intense that they are accompanied by coronal mass ejection. When charged particles from coronal mass ejection reaches areas near Earth. So sometimes they may interfere with the Earth's magnetic field and trigger intense lights in the sky called auroras. So generally in the northern polar regions and southern polar regions, these coronal mass ejections may tamper with the Earth's magnetic field and create lightning in the northern polar regions, which is called as Aurora Borealis in the northern hemisphere and Aurora Australis in the southern hemisphere. Sometimes these strong coronal mass ejections may also interfere with power grids and radio transmission and communication systems on Earth. But this occurs very seldom. Okay, most of the times these solar spots and sun flare activities are stopped by our very powerful Earth's atmosphere. Summarizing the video, we have discussed that although sun is 
the main source of energy to our planet but from where the energy is sourced inside the sun what is the source of energy of sun which is generally produced in its core through nuclear fusion reaction where hydrogen atoms are bombarding continuously to collide together and produce helium generating tremendous amount of energy and this bundle of energy reaches the surface of earth in the form of electromagnetic radiations what are electromagnetic radiations these are radiations emitted by sun which oscillate in a synchronized path based on their magnetic and electrical fields and when they reach earth they reach earth at somewhere about 8 minutes 20 second time period and traveling in a synchronized path and this electromagnetic radiation which reaches the earth have different wavelengths and different wave frequency so the bundle of energy which is emitted by the sun reaches the earth which is called as incoming solar radiation insulation and it has this bundle of energy carries electromagnetic radiations having different wavelengths and different wave frequency which is part of a larger umbrella platform called as electromagnetic spectrum so electromagnetic spectrum is basically a platter carrying bundle of all the energy which is emitted by sun uh, having different wavelengths and wave frequencies and based on their wavelength and wave frequencies they can be divided into four spectrums the short wavelength radiation which includes gamma rays x rays uv rays second spectrum is of visible rays third spectrum is of infrared radiation fourth spectrum is of long wave radiation including microwaves radar waves and radio waves and besides this the insulation in earth is also sometimes affected by solar activity cycles manifested by sunspots or solar flares which seldom affect the temperatures on earth but sometimes also tamper with the magnetic field of earth affecting the various biophysical and chemical processes of earth so this was all about the solar radiation and electromagnetic radiation thank you so much